So, I've had a couple people ask me this on Reddit, on the forum that I'm on. So, I want to show you how to make these little paper flowers. Um, these are my example of them. So, I'm using the first Harry Potter book. And these are all pages from the first book. I've made five of these so far, um, little bouquets, so it's four flowers a piece. And you can kind of change it up if you want to. I um, am doing these for my wedding, so they look a certain way, but mm, they look they come out pretty good. This is like the, the mess that's happening from working on them. Okay, so what you're gonna need is a pair of scissors, a pair of wire cutters, a glue gun, which I'm heating up right now. There's my little glue gun. Some floral tape, which I just got this at Walmart. It was pretty easy to find, right in the flower section. And then I got some um, black ribbon. These are just for my bouquets. You don't have to use it, obviously. Um, tastes are different with everybody. And then obviously some little wires, which this one I've already cut in half with my wire cutters. So what you wanna do is I don't have any pliers. We're renovating the house, so like everything is uh, inside right now. So what I've just been doing is taking the tip of it and pulling the wire up and creating this little curve at the bottom. So this will be the top where the um, middle part of the flower goes in. You can do a little more closed loop if you want. It's not really necessary because there's not a lot of um, tutorials that show you how to stem the flowers. They just kind of show you how to make the paper flowers. So you just need a little hook at the end. I'm gonna put that guy off to the side. Now I have pre-made these little pieces to make my flower. So I, you need four per flower. Um, when you get to a second flower though, because you're gonna be cutting four off of one of these, and I'll show you what I mean in a second, but you're gonna be cutting four total petals off, so you set it to the side and you can use it for the next flower. So what you want to do is you want to take a full page like this. This is a full Harry Potter page. Let me move all this stuff. <clears throat> so you take the page that you have that you want to use like so. I know it's kind of messy, but I'm left-handed, and this is also a guide for left-handed people who have no idea what they're doing. So you take a corner of the page, whichever corner, it doesn't really matter. I like to use the top right corner over here because you're gonna, when you rip the page out, it's gonna have this edge and it's gonna end up cutting itself off. So you barely even have to, you know, cut anything once you rip the page off. So you have this like little edge from where the book was glued in. So you take this corner and you just fold it until it meets that serrated edge and you fold it into a little triangle. And you can fold this piece if you want to, if you're not really comfortable with like your cutting skills, or you can draw a little line. But all you wanna do is just cut that end right off. So let me cut this off. And this is basic for like every single flower that you're gonna make. They all come out pretty much the same and obviously like they all have their own personality and come out a little differently each time, but that's the fun part. So now you have this triangle that you fold it in half. So what you're gonna wanna do is just fold it in half again. And it doesn't have to be perfect because again, you're not gonna be using this whole piece. Like these are all of the edges. Like this is how it comes out. Looks like that. So you're gonna wanna fold it a second time. So this is the second fold. And then I have some glue pieces on there. Okay. And then you wanna fold it a third time and this is gonna look weird for people who are right-handed, which is mostly everybody, but I'm left-handed and I like to do things differently for my own <laughs> sanity. Um, so you have these three folds of triangle and it should come out looking like this. There'll be a fold here and then two open edges. So we are gonna wanna do, and you can, again, have a template for this. Like you can take one of these if you want and just trace it if you want to, but you don't have to if you want it to kind of come out organically. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your paper flower and your scissors, or what you're gonna make the petals out of, and you're going to take the folded edge right here, and you're gonna cut up, 
and then start curving it like so until it becomes basically a little teardrop shape. And you can, so like I kind of just messed that up a little bit, but you can take this open edge here and just kind of shave it down if you'd like and just cut down to the side. And then you cut the tip off because that's gonna be your opening. So tip snip, open it on up. And this is how it should look when it's done. So it should look just like that. Okay, so I won't use this one because I already had these four out. So one, two, three, four. So you take these guys and you open them up. You don't have to open them up. You can kind of just like play with it as you go. But you're going to use every single petal that you cut. So I'm just going to lay them over here. Kind of off view. <clears throat> so you should have four open flowers. And what I like to do is take like the biggest one that I find. And this one's actually the biggest, the last one that I opened. And that's the one that I want to cut my first petal off of because this is going to be the outer layer of the flower. You can use either side depending on like, you know, if you're being uh, particular and you want certain words to pop out. But for me, um, these are just my bridesmaids bouquets, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so what you want to do is just take any one of the petals and cut one guy off. So you should have one off. And so it should look like this, just like that. Get this out of here. And you should end up with one petal. And because like my life is so messy, um, I really don't have like a particular order that I do this in, but I like to do like one and then you take the next flower and you cut off any two petals that are right next to each other. So one and then two. And don't cut them in half, like don't cut them apart from each other. You want it to be two full petals, just like that. So now you'll have this one. This is the second layer of the flower. So I like to lay them in the layers that they're going in for now because we're gonna end up gluing them up and then curling them. And then when you put them on the base, you end up using this first guy first. So I'll get to all that in a second. So now you're gonna do the same process. You're gonna take, except the next one, you're gonna cut off three. So when it's your third piece, you cut off three petals. And that's kind of easy to remember because you're only using four pieces. So there's the three and the three. And then this one, you're gonna cut off exactly half. So I'm just gonna cut here and here and cut that directly in half. So cut and cut. And again, the cuts don't have to be perfect. They can have a little like edge on them because what you're gonna end up doing with these is you're going to fold them in like so. So they look kind of like a cone and you're gonna glue those sides together. And so it's not really gonna matter. Like this one kind of has like, I don't know, I guess I got water on it or something. So you take half of that and the other half, just put it off to the side because you can use it for the next flower and not have to cut up four flowers and it kind of saves you time. So this first one is always tricky. I happen to be using these toothpicks. So it makes it a little bit easier. So you take your toothpick if you want to, unless you have like really good dexterity um, or are really used to it and you wanna kind of make this look like a little petal. So it looks like that. And you're gonna glue it pretty much right on that inseam. So I'm gonna see if I can get some glue with my right hand because I'm terrible at that. Need some practice. So I'm just gonna shove some glue in there and let it go. And then I'm gonna seal that guy. And that might not have been enough glue. No, it definitely wasn't. Okay, so just put as much glue as you feel comfortable with in there. This is a low heat gun. So it's not going to really burn you or anything. It, it, it does run hot, I can't say that, but um, it's not gonna be too awful. It's not like you're touching an oven. So you just kind of let that guy sit there and I know it's gonna look funky at the bottom, but you're gonna end up cutting that off anyway. So you really just want the visual, like the top here, to look really nice. So you set that off to the side and you repeat that process with all the other petals. 
So the second one, the one with two flowers, you only want to fold them in partially. And it gets easier as you go. It's just the first two that are really kind of a pain to work with. Um, but you want it to kind of look like that. I know it's kind of fuzzy, I'm sorry. So you want it to look just like this. And you're gonna, again, glue. You don't have to use hot glue gun, but it found, I found it's a lot easier. It dries so fast, it's low heat. You don't have to wait, waste time, anything like that. This is all about saving time for me, especially because my wedding is like just over a month from now. So I'm gonna grab my glue gun with my left hand this time and going to stick some glue right on the tip of that petal. And the reason that you wanna be careful with where you're putting the glue to is because when you go to curl these down and that glue hardens, it's gonna be a little bit tougher to curl your petal. But you do want it to look just like that. And I'm gonna put him to the side too. And then your third one, you're just going to take, you can do it from like the inside or the outside, whichever one's more comfortable for you. But you're gonna basically fold it like this. So it looks like that. And you're gonna glue these two petals together. So those should be open. So we'll grab some glue. And this one you don't even have to close for, so I can actually show you how far down I glue it. So I just go like less than halfway down because that gives me more room to curl the petal with. So you see the glue there. I'm just gonna close it on top and stick my finger in and kind of press it together. It's a little warm, but it's not overly hot. So it should look just like a, like a little, like a long oyster. Just like that, and you see the hole down there too, and that's super beneficial for the um, getting it on the stem. So same thing with the rest of them. So you should with the four, the one that has four petals on it. You're gonna connect it so that it has three. So I'm just gonna glue this on the same way. You can do it inside or outside. The last one I did outside, so this one's inside. So you just take a little bit of glue. And it doesn't really matter if it gets on the rest of the flower because the only part that you're going to end up seeing is the curls on the petals. So like if you get it, you know, on the inside or on the outside or on the bottom somewhere here, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> so it should look just like that. Three. And it doesn't matter if those crisscross either because again, they're going to be curled down so you won't even notice it. So we'll set that guy to the side and then you take the next layer. And I like to do all this first because it makes it so much easier when you're going to um, put it onto the stem. And that way it's all done all at once. So I even use less glue there and just get that bad boy on there. And you don't even have to really press firmly or anything. It just glues itself together. It's, I mean, it's paper. So you do the same thing until you get to the end. And this is all, like I said, the first Harry Potter book. So um, I haven't wrecked any pages, which is really great because I really want to use the whole book if I can. It's a kind of a waste. And I feel like um, J.K. Rowling would really not approve of us ripping up her books. But it's going to a worthy cause, I think. So there's that one. This is the second to last layer. And then this is the last layer, your biggest layer. So... I always like to kind of match them up first before I glue them just to make sure it's going to look nice because you can, like I said, switch sides if you want or if you have like a, a chapter piece on the outside or the inside. Like I had um, I had the one with Fluffy on it and just the way that I cut the petal, you could see all the dog's faces. So when it curled down, it was really cool looking. So we're just going to glue that last piece and I need to stick another um, piece of glue in the back of my gun, which I will say, it doesn't use like a ton of glue, but I've noticed that I'm putting on a new stick every other flower that I make. So I've been trying to use a little bit less glue as I go, because I was like just hamming it up and gluing and gluing and gluing. And I have a 25 stick, so it's not that huge of a deal. Okay, so this is the curling process. Doesn't have to go in order, but I like to put this first piece that we did on the stem before I go any further. So you'll notice this whole bottom, like I said, is really funky. And um, what you wanna do 
as you can cut that end piece off and I'm just kind of fixing my hook real quick because I'm actually just gonna cut it off because I realized that I made a hook already on this piece so that was my fault so I'm just gonna cut that off hopefully it doesn't go flying it did but that's fine okay so here's my hook I'm gonna cut this first because I already know like I don't want it to be this long so you can cut really anywhere on this because you can just glue this piece to the stem because um, this is the middle piece so you don't want it sticking up too far because if it does I have a couple flowers that it sticks up way too far and I'm not really a big fan of it so I've been trying to like cut that out but you can just cut it don't be afraid of it and then I like to stick the stem hook side up down into it and then just kind of find a good place for it on the hook it's not going to hook in but you can find a good length for it so like the hook is right about halfway through and that's really where I like it to be so I'm just going to squeeze those ends down onto it it's not going to hold it but you can um, kind of twist that around and it, don't worry about bending it because it just gives it more of a unique look and a more organic look because flowers are not perfect um, so there's the end and I'm just going to kind of stick some glue on the end here and it doesn't really matter how much once again because this is going to keep it from sliding when you get the rest of the um, flowers on there and you're going to glue it to this piece anyway so this is really like your base and if it's crooked whatever because you're again going to put other pieces over it so I'm just going to put it over here I have some other books over here. I'm just gonna lay it on top of it so that it can dry while I'm curling these flowers. So this is the second piece. And what you wanna do is just take any cylindrical object. I have this toothpick here, like I said, they're just like super long and they're sturdy. So I've used this on pretty much every flower and have had good success. Um, so this piece, I do two things with it. Sometimes I'll keep these two pieces separated. So that kind of looks like a coat almost. But this one I did almost one piece, so I'm just going to roll it back. And sometimes they like to be a little obstinate. And again, don't worry about bending it or folding it or whatever because it's paper. Um, so just roll that piece kind of down. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I like to bend it in half too so that it kind of curves in. And it kind of keeps that shape. So this piece will go next on the stem and you're gonna cut this too, so. And then the next piece. So you just take the top and you take your little pick or whatever you have and you just roll that down. So you can roll it down as far as you want and as tight as you want, it all depends on like how you want your flower to be. So I roll that down, you don't have to hold it, I'm just showing you. And then you just take it out and you can fluff it up afterwards. I like to do it after I have the flower assembled because that kind of like gives it a more uniform look and you know how far out you can uh, fluff it out. So you do that with both sides. Um, typically the side that has more glue won't go down as far, obviously. So it doesn't matter if it's uneven, um, but this is what it should look like in the end. It doesn't have to be any particular like perfect round shape because it's going to take shape as you assemble it. So this is the piece that goes next so here's my third piece and this one as you can see has more of a open flower where I glued it but I'll show you what happens when you roll it down it really doesn't make a difference so don't worry if it's not perfect when you glue it together because ta-da you don't even notice it Hooray! Okay. so the rolling process is really my favorite part um, I don't know why, I think it's just like really easy to do and you kind of get the sense that you're, you know, finishing your project almost, I guess. I don't know, I like it. So you just do this with every single piece and you can, like I like to do the bigger ones kind of fast and hold them less because they'll be a little more plump and they're not gonna be these tight little curls, but you can play with it. And sometimes, uh, like the first couple times that you go to do a curl, it might be really hard. Like this piece may not go over all the way, so you'll just bend it down and you'll be like, what the heck, it didn't even curl. <laughs> I've had that happen quite a few times when I was like watching TV, not paying attention. But 
It takes about, I would say, close to an hour to do a whole bouquet. Um, if you're adding ribbon or anything or like trying to arrange something, that's a little different. I'm literally just adding flowers on stems and then putting the little leaves that I have at the bottom of them, gluing that on, floral taping it, and then putting it together with three other flowers and making a bouquet with some ribbon. But like, I don't really have time to sit here and like make a really pretty like lighted bouquet for like every single one of my bridesmaids and it there's only like I mean there's seven of them but we're doing an outdoor wedding so it's not going to be like the fanciest thing you've ever seen so they kind of look funky like you'll see these folds and you'll be like oh how's that going to come out but as you can see from my example it comes out just fine so here's that piece Whee! he's got a little stick on him so you want to take that first piece that we made and you can kind of just stick it down on and see how far down it goes in. So like right about there. That's about where you want it, which is like just the tip of the flower coming out. Um, you don't have to cut this piece. You can just squish it on in because you're not even going to notice it, like I said. And then um, you can kind of glue that on from there. So like I like to take it off and glue it, but this one seems to be sticking to the glue that I already had on there. But no worries, like even if it does drop down when you go to put more pieces on, um, the good thing is that you can just glue it on from there. So like if this were to somehow pull off the rest of the flower pieces that I did, and I'll show you if that does happen, just stick some glue in and call it good. So this next piece, I like to, um, this is that number two, I like to kind of feel out to see how far up it's gonna go because if I feel like it's not gonna go up far enough, like see how that's sticking out? Hang on. So how it's sticking out top, out the top kind of far. Um, you don't have to leave it like that. Like you can cut the bottom. So let me see if I can get this off, yep. So you can cut the bottom so that the opening is a little more wide and you can get it up farther. So I did that and I am just going to stick some glue on there. So you just stick some glue. You just stick some glue right on the end. Sorry, I got a text. So you just stick it anywhere really that's convenient and you can just like rub it off on the paper. And I know this looks like super ugly right now, but I promise it's gonna come out super pretty. So you stick it in the stem and I know this is hard because I'm left-handed, once again. And you wanna put these two up so that they look like that. I feel like my camera is trying to focus on everything but the flower. <laughs> so it should look like that. Nothing special. And you can set that down and take, oh, I skipped one. I skipped the next piece, actually. Oh, no, I didn't, okay. I have to curl one more real quick. Hold on. This will be fast. So you just curl. 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 And curl. Okay, so done. See how easy that is? Once you get used to it, you're pretty well off. So the next piece is this three piece. Whee! And you're going to stick the stem right down into that hole. And you can kind of like go from here, like you, I mean, if you want them all to be similar, like I like to stick the taller pieces up in the back just because it looks nicer. So this is kind of like how it's looking. I'll pick up my camera. So this is kind of how it's looking just now. Like it already looks just fine. And once you get it all done, it looks really great. So it looks kind of silly for now, but you can kind of rotate these pieces to see like where you want your petals to match up. They don't have to, you can, really doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna leave them where they are and I'm going to, I, you can like leave it on the stem. This is really great, it makes it easy to glue. So like you can do this, kind of show how where they're gonna go and then you can just kind of pull it down and then you can twist the flower around until you have as much glue as you want, if however much you feel comfortable with. And then you just kind of take it 
and pull it up and it glues itself in and that's that so that's that piece and it's already looking fabulous not disappointed in how this is coming out and then you need four petal five petal and six petal so there's really only three left and it gets easier as you go once they get bigger because you can pull them up farther. So again, here's that same process. Here's the next layer and here's this piece. So you can pull it up and decide like where you want it to go and that looks pretty good, honestly. It doesn't look like there's too many, like you don't want them to have like a pedal, 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 like a step. You want them to kind of rotate each other. So there's like a pedal in between each each layer. So like this is the layer I just glued on right here. And this is the layer I'm about to glue on. So you can see there's two, there's a gap in between where the last pedal was. And I think that looks really great. May not get there once I get the glue on, but you can kind of mess around with it for a couple of seconds before the glue dries. You have just a little bit of time to work with that. And I need to move that out of the way. So we'll get this guy glued up. And you don't have to go all the way around again you can it doesn't really matter it kind of gives it more bulk when you do that so I'm just gonna try and get this piece on there because I showed you how I was doing it and I want it to come out that way okay perfect so I just literally got this on the stem and this is what it looks like right now so it's really pretty and there's still two layers to go so it's gonna come out really nice. Okay, so we'll set this guy down. We'll grab the next layer, pop it on. So just stick it right down in that hole because you cut the tips off. And we're gonna match it up. So sometimes you can't help where the gaps are and that's totally fine because again, nothing in nature is perfect or imperfect. Sometimes it can be perfect but that is all perception of humans. It's very unique. Okay. So I'm going to just get this glue. Didn't want to stick. This is like a $5 glue band, guys. And I'm gonna rotate my flower if it wants to cooperate. And I'm gonna move this piece. It doesn't get flower on the tips, or glue on the tips. That's the only place you really don't want glue is the tips. And then you want to just slide that piece up and get it down. And as I say that, I get glue on my tip. And you're just going to attach it. However it fits nicely. And it kind of doesn't matter, actually, that I just cut glue on one of the tips because you can't even tell. So there's the next layer. And then we're going to move on to the final layer. So this is the biggest piece. And it's got the biggest hole, coincidentally, but that's fine because you have so much room down here to work with that it's really going to be fine. Okay, so I'm going to get him on the end there, and I'm going to stick my glue on real quick. It's going to be off camera, just so I can do this fast and show you the end. You kind of get the idea, I feel like. Okay, let me get this bad boy on here. I'm just going to wing it and hope it looks good, and ta-da, done. So this is a whole flower. It looks great in a pinch and you see those edges here, but I mean, obviously like if you put it in a bouquet, I'll actually get one of my done ones. One of the first ones I did. <coughs> so this is what it looks like when it's finished. And they don't all look the same, which is great. Um, they're all kind of bunched in, but I did the bottoms and everything. This one's coming apart a little bit, so it's not really my best example, but um, I've got five of these, and I just made that flower for you. Ta-da! Done. Awesome.